Hello, hello. How are you all doing? What's good, Instagram family? It's your guy, Rogers1906. It's time for Godly Mindset Motivation. Make sure you go ahead and share this live right now with everybody you know, hands down. We're going to go to God first, as we always do, and then we're going to talk about securing the bag, what to expect this week going forward, and how we are going to navigate through this journey of trading together. So real quick, I got to do a solid shout out to the CNC. If you're in the CNC and you've been making money with us, or you've just been praying with us, participating, learning, drop some money bags in the chat right now. All right. What did I just do? All right, here we go. I see you, CNC. What's going on, y'all? What's going on? Y'all could be so hard on people sometimes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had to say that real quick. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm a little hard on a few people sometimes. But that's what accountability looks like sometimes. And sometimes, too, this isn't part of my message, but sometimes you got to block people just, just for yourself. So you don't say or do anything that's out of line, right? Um, but I totally get it. So if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the share button right here. Man, we got a lot to talk about today. But first, you already know what time it is. We got to go to God before we talk about securing the bag. So uh, I'm going to get right to it, man. All right, I'm going to get right to it. So uh, first of all, glory be to God. So thankful you're here. Continue to share as I speak. Um, last night, I was on a phone call. Um, and in this call, I was expressing how something was so confusing to me about a particular situation and this personality of a group of individuals, not just one individual. And um, it was pointed out to me that sometimes uh, God doesn't communicate things just through what we expect them to be communicated through, right? So the question was posed like, what are some of the unique ways that God speaks so obviously we have number one, the word of God. We have two uh, pastors. We have um, elders, leaders, friends, parents, uh, all of these things, right? Even sometimes the weather, um, but most importantly, circumstance, circumstance. So I want to read to you first Kings chapter 19. Starting at verse 10, it says, Elijah replied, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. God then replied, go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And Elijah stood, the Lord passed by, and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. Hmm. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. But the uh, And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire was a sound of a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in a cloak and went out and stood to the entrance of the cave. And a voice said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He replied again, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left. Now they are trying to kill me. Then the Lord told him, go back the same way you came and travel to a wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive there, anoint Hazel and King Aram. Once again, can you hear him now? So sometimes the response of how God is speaking and what God is doing in our lives is not always immediate, right? We always want um, instant gratification because we have unique technology, we have convenience, we have our eyes, we have, you know, our thoughts, but God doesn't work like that. Not even for me, right? Nobody is above God's will, right? So we have to understand that even in our circumstances that God leads us to a point to where we have to make a shift and a change and realign ourselves and refocus to what it is that he wants us to do. Even if we have to weather a storm, weather a fire, weather an earthquake, we must be still and wait for that soft, but yet powerful voice. 
And I guarantee you that God will put you with people that elevate you to be closer to him each and every time that you submit. Now, I also love how the word teaches us, be still and know that I am God. I will not leave you nor forsake you. So what does that stillness look like? That stillness is complete submission. It is being patient. Earlier today, I posted a reel um, because God had dropped this on my heart uh, that we have to love ourselves and love requires patience. So we must now start that process in every single thing we do. As you're starting your investment journey, as you're, in, as, you, as you're learning or starting your business or your fitness goals, you have to be patient with yourself. Stop being in a hurry. The quicker you try to get to the finish line, the faster you're going to lose. Be patient. Make whatever sacrifices and investments that you need to align yourself first for the will of God to operate in your life and for you to learn and grow in everything that you need to learn and grow in half. So it doesn't matter what the fire is doing. It doesn't matter about the earthquakes. It doesn't matter about the wind. All that matters is the soft, still, but powerful voice of God. So today, my brothers and sisters, as we continue this journey together, read the word of God, pray more, spend time with people who elevate you to want to draw closer to God. No, we're not, we not going up to the strip club and having drinks. No, 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 we're not, we not going to pop bottles tonight. No, we're not going to roll up this blunt tonight to talk about problems. No, we are going to sit here and pray with each other. We're going to go and we're going to learn this material together so we can win together, so we can elevate and be closer to what God wants us to do, right? That is our mission. That's how we lift each other up. And I want to leave you guys with this. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to, pr to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. That is going to require immense patience. So apply these same principles, ladies and gentlemen, to what you're doing on the stock market, what you're doing in your cryptocurrency or your shorts or your futures or, or, or even your Forex. <laughs> apply patience to your position and make sure that you're always putting God first. All right, y'all. So that's the word for today. God bless each and every one of you guys. I just got to give them some glory, man. You know, I don't take any credit, man, but I love seeing the fact that souls are being cha changed, lives are being changed. And if you have been uh, just blessed by what God is doing right now, do me a favor, put some some halos, some angels with the little halo on in the chat right now, because we're going to go to God in prayer. And then I'm going to talk about a few stock picks and a few things I'm looking at this week. So Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for each and every man and woman on here, whether they believe in you now or not. God, I pray that you touch them. God, let them hear from you, Father God. Let them not be uh, dismantled by their own wisdom, their, their own knowledge, God, because we perish for lack of knowledge in some instances, God, but the true knowledge comes from you, God. So continue to position us in a place of patience and your power. It's in the name of Jesus, I pray. God bless the rest of this live as we explore avenues to secure the bag because we thank you in advance for the abundance. Bless each and every man in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. So, big elephant in the room. Tomorrow. 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 I can't sing. But tomorrow, we got Jerome Powell speaking tomorrow at what, 2? Is it 2.30? Uh, but the Fed is actually meeting right now. I'm taking a look right now because I don't want to give you the wrong time. Uh, Jerome Powell speaks at, I do believe... Two thirty p.m. Eastern. That's one thirty Central Time. So as that happens tomorrow, we have a couple things to think about. First of all, there are ways that you can play it. Understand that the trend is your friend. If you have the flawless trading system, you already know where I'm coming from. But if you don't have it, you need to get it. DM me the word discount. I'll send you. Actually, DM me the word flawless. So that way I don't just send you the everything bundle. DM me the word flawless. I'll make sure you get that discount on the flawless trading system today. 
So you can identify the trend. So one thing that I want to point out before I actually get into what I want to discuss today are the different plays that you can play. So say, for example, the NASDAQ is falling and it's looking terrible. Now, most of you in the CNC, y'all already know this, uh, but we can play QQQ uh, to the upside or downside to mirror the NASDAQ. OK, uh, we also have SPY. To mirror the S&P index, which that is pretty much the NASDAQ itself. Then we have DIA, which mirrors the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Okay, these are very cheap, affordable options. Also shares, not financial advice, of course. And last but not least, we have IWM that mirrors uh, the Russell 2000. I got coffee all on my cup, y'all. This is my third cup of coffee today. So just to recap, QQQ, SPY, DIA, and IWM. Those are what are tickers that you might want to watch tomorrow and catch the trend on because whatever Jerome Powell says tomorrow is going to um is going to affect each and every one of those indices and these ETFs. Okay. So QQQ for the NASDAQ, SPY for SPY, DIA for Dow Jones, and IWM for Russell 2000. Now I want to go right into a mixture of cryptocurrency, particularly Bitcoin, and then, of course, our mining plays, okay? So I'm going right to it. Make sure that you go check out my YouTube channel where I will show the full analysis of what I'm looking at, and you can see the chart and all my unique setups. So if you haven't done, all, done that already, follow me on YouTube at Rogers1906, the Godly Mindset Motivator. All right, so we're going to look at Bitcoin first, and we had a very unique uh, but lovely drop on Bitcoin, right? Uh, as we talked about on Strategy Sunday, um, <laughs> we know that this is an accumulation phase, right? We know that we have to go through the markdown. We had all the hype that came with it. So as a result, Bitcoin has fallen to $60,324 as we speak. Now it's at three twenty three, dollars And it continues to fall. Now I'll tell you what I did is I bought a short um, or a put, if you will, on Bitcoin at $61,726. Now, why did I do that? I already saw that we had a channel down on Bitcoin on the daily. On the monthly, we're still quite bullish, but we've been so overbought on Bitcoin. So I'm going to jump over here to my flawless trading system uh, for my YouTube channel. Um, so that way they could see that. We are falling below some key exponential moving averages on Bitcoin. Um, so I'm expecting Bitcoin to continue this downtrend, and I'm going to give you the targeted number. Now, we possibly will have some bounces because we do have Riot reporting earnings today. Um, we've got, I do believe, Coinbase, if they haven't already. I think they have uh, something coming up. But I, I do believe that... Um, Bitcoin could possibly test $59,257. Now, one tricky thing about this is that if you look at the chart patterns and if you were in uh, the virtual or in person down in St. Petersburg, Florida, I dropped the indicator on you that you could probably use for the rest of your life with anything else. All right. So um, we see that we do have somewhat of a rising wedge that broke. And then we have a double bottom on the daily. But we also have a very strong bullish flag on Bitcoin. However, right at $59,257, we fall below the trend and we possibly could go to about 56, possibly. My hope is that the double bottom causes us to go back up and we break out of the flag and possibly test resistance around $69,545. And that's going to be contingent upon what happens tomorrow with Jerome Powell. So that being said, We've got to pay close attention to the miners. Now, I told the CNC today something very unique. I said, ladies and gentlemen, maybe not exactly like that, but I told him, I said, listen, here's an idea that I have on CleanSpark. I said that if CleanSpark falls below $17.50, I'm going to start looking at puts. I may go and grab some lottery puts on CleanSpark just in case, but there's been a lot of volume at the $17.50 puts on CleanSpark expiring June 21st, 2024. As a result, what happened? Boom. Clean Spark started falling off. We were roughly around 1790 something this morning. Clean Spark is 1662 right now. Again, accumulation phase, but that's not the end. I do believe that Clean Spark could possibly drop down to about $14.60 within the next 
couple of weeks. OK, within the next couple of weeks, yes, we could have some bounces to the upside. But guess what? When it hits that fourteen dollar and sixty cent price, that is the discount zone. That is exactly when I again, not financial advice. I will be dollar cost averaging and buy more clean spark. All right. I will be buying it at fourteen sixty. In the meantime, I will be playing puts. All right. Now we do again have riot reporting today. Just yesterday. We had earnings from none other than one of the big goats in the uh, Bitcoin space, MicroStrategies. Now, what did I do for MicroStrategy? I played a put. Why? Everybody else was buying calls. I mean, if you look at the entire whale activity on, on MicroStrategy, everyone was buying $1,300, $1,000, um, $2,000 call options on MicroStrategy. I have seen something repetitive in this current market is that if they have EPS beats or, or uh, and revenue beats, for some reason, the ticker goes down. So I will tell you, I took a lotto on MicroStrategy and it printed 126%. Some made 300% on that play, but MicroStrategy is continuing to fall down um, there's a little bit of buying pressure right there at one thousand eighty five dollars today but i'll tell you it is falling below the discount zone there's a high probability that this will get back in the nine to eight hundred dollar price range and now those contracts are worth thousands of dollars so i think that what happened with microstrategy what happens today with riot is going to be a complete definition of what's going to happen with everything associated with bitcoin right now all right so i don't like to signal a lot of riot play i mean a lot of uh, earnings plays but i do like to talk about them so you can have some price points to think about so currently there is a head and shoulders on riot on the one day time frame but there's excuse me, there's also a falling wedge, okay? I do believe that we're going to get back into that falling wedge and eventually get to $9 per share on Riot. And that could happen after earnings. Why do I think it's going to happen? Let me tell you. All right, so if we had Bitcoin, it went up quite a bit. We know that they have a lot of Bitcoin holders. We know that they expanded and bought new facilities to mine more Bitcoin so they could be prepared for the halving. We know that they're the number two, actually, yeah, they're the number two um, Bitcoin mining company in the world. However, Bitcoin has not reached its new, soon to be all time high or new support. So I do believe that we're going to fill this gap down, just like AJ, AJ said in the chat. I think that we're going to go to $9, okay? He said it's going to 916 which there is a gap right there, but I do believe there's a second gap all the way down to $8.38 on Riot. So I do believe that these earnings today are likely going to be bearish. But if you're bullish, that's okay. Just make sure that you give yourself time on these positions, right? Do not get in a hurry and buy these short-term positions. At least at minimum, stick to the flawless trading system, where if it's Monday or Tuesday, we're looking at next week, Friday. If it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we want to look at two weeks out. So I want you to make sure that you play it safe on these plays right now honestly if i were you if i'm new to trading i stay away from the the options on the miners right now okay i just stay away from all the up right away from them all together unless your risk tolerance is really high like mine all right so me personally i'm not playing riot for earnings uh but i do have a put on clean spark right now i'm holding that same put that I told the CNC that I was in earlier, and I'm going to see what happens and play that as a proxy. It's only got what one of them, so I didn't put a lot of capital into it because, again, we have to manage risks, okay? Now, as I talk about um, Riot, and I told you guys on Strategy Sunday that I would at least this week take a look at BTBT. Now, granted... Your boy does not like BTBT at all, okay? So I want to let that be a disclaimer. Um, let me get it pulled up here on the chart. All right. And I'm going to tell you guys exactly what I told the CNC. All right. I said that if BTBT fell below $2.01, that maybe, maybe I would buy once it touched 174. Well, guess what? <laughs> We're almost at 174 already, right? Um, so we did fall below uh, the price that I told them. And here we are. Uh, it literally came to fruition um, in less than, what, 24 hours. <laughs> so 
in one month's time frame, um, maybe, just again, um, emphasis on the M and maybe, right? Um, I think that maybe it could bounce back up to about $2.50. But it's going to $1.74. There's a falling wedge on BTBT. I don't really care for the company. I haven't heard much about them expanding uh, their mining facilities, such as, say, a hut, a clean spark, um, uh, a, uh, excuse me, a, uh, Mara or a riot. <laughs> so I think that it would be further downside on BTBT. Now, where it could be within the next, uh, let's say, four months, again, emphasis on the M and maybe, uh, we could possibly start back testing $4.09. If they have mentioned anything about expanding their mining facilities. But again, I do not like BTBT. All right. And I know not to anybody that does, but that's just not what I'm playing. All right, so that's enough of the Bitcoin talk right now for the moment. But please, practice risk management at all costs on your mining plays and your Bitcoin-related plays. I don't even care if it's IBIT. Uh, make sure that you're doing what you need to do to win in the end. Now, again, I'm still holding 100 shares of CleanSpark. I plan to buy more once it touches my price point in the discount zone. Also, I'm still holding 100 shares of IBIT. And just as I told you guys on Strategy Sunday, I've opened now 50 shares of AETH, which is the Ethereum uh, trust through Bitwise, right? So I, I like that strategy a lot, and I'm going to continue to dollar cost average until things continue to get to where they need to be. All right, so now today we have some other key earnings besides just AMD, but best believe I will be looking at AMD for you guys. Um, but first, what I want to cover is Amazon, right? So there's been a lot of rumor and skepticism about Amazon today. Um, and in fact, there was news that Amazon would actually end up um, doing what Google did. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> end up doing what Google did and open uh, the opportunity to get dividends, right? I, that has not been done. Uh, now, Amazon is currently sitting at 179.78. We've touched 180 a couple of times here in the past couple of weeks. I have an upside target of 185.08 on Amazon, uh, but also to the downside, we could fall back below 170. It's not impossible. All right, so I'm going to straddle Amazon for earnings, and that means I'm going to play both sides. Not in one play. I'm going to have a call all the way out to, what, July, uh, which happens to be very bullish seasonality for Amazon. July is always a very bullish month. Make a note of that. July is always a very bullish month for Amazon. All right, and then I'm going in the short ter term, like – talking about the next two weeks. I'm going to have a short-term put on Amazon. Uh, again, only one. I want to take it light because we have earnings, and earnings are extremely volatile, especially right here around the time that the Fed is reporting. So that's what I'm doing on Amazon. I'm straddling. I gave you the price points once again. If it goes up, I'm looking at 185.08 and then possibly a break at 190.13. Um, and then if it goes down, I'm looking for 171.96 and possibly all the way down to 155.97. That's a big, big drop. Okay. So earnings today will be quite interesting. I think the momentum of an announcement of a uh, dividend is going to be wonderful, okay? I have not talked about AMD yet, so stay tuned. All right, um, also, I'm looking at SMCI, right? Now, what's uh, what's so unique about them? So there's one place that I like to just go and just see what people are saying, and that's stocktwits.com, right? You could also download the app, um, and you could just type in whatever symbol. Once you type it in, it usually gives you a sentiment, which is SMCI is pretty much neutral at the moment. Most people believe SMCI is going to take a big dump today. All right. So um, how you doing, Kari? We're talking about a lot of stuff right now. Right now we're on stocks and a few earnings plays today that are uh, on top watch. All right. So SMCI is confirmed to report earnings on Tuesday. Uh, the estimate is $5.79 a share and a revenue of, of $4.01. Um, 4.1 billion, representing a 212.5% year-over-year revenue growth. That is extremely high. So if they announce something like a stock split, a forward split, then that's going to be wonderful for SMCI. But honestly, I'm a little shaky on playing SMCI. Number one, those options are about $6,000 per call ops and $6,000 per put. I was in one earlier, made my money, got on down, kept it pushing, 
Didn't even tell you a word about it. It is what it is. Uh, because th those things are really volatile and expensive. So, again, that website I mentioned is stocktwits.com, okay? So, right now, uh, again, the sentiment is pretty much mixed on SMCI. Um, but, honestly, if they do have a stock split, a forward split, I'm extremely bullish on them, okay? And I think they will rip, all right? Um, and that would be good for the Russell 2000. So, you could take advantage of it if you did want to have a proxy, uh, per se, for earnings, IWM, all right? That's a good proxy for SMCI. Uh, some of you may even want to play NVIDIA or SMCH, right? Uh, but IWM, SMCI is one of the most heavily weighted tickers in the Russell 2000, right? So um, if you wanted to play that for earnings. But if that stock split happens, best believe it's going to run. Now, I'm going to take a lot of questions and answers today. Uh, but before I do, I'm going to talk about AMD, so if you guys know anybody want to hear about AMD, go ahead and share this live with them right now. Click that button right down here. And then we'll talk about a little bit, bit of crypto positions that I'm looking at. Excuse me. And then I'll take some questions. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at AMD. All right. So again, I don't like to signal earnings plays because if you're a beginner, you're going to be thinking that the stock market is all fast money, and it's not. Remember, I've told you guys, if it happens fast, it won't last, right? So uh, looking at AMD, we have tested 161, actually 162 in the past couple of days, um, but we actually have hit opened at 161 this morning. It's sitting at 160.35, and I will tell you, I will be the first to say, I would love to see AMD break $190. Uh, but also, I will not complain if AMD goes to 120, okay? Because, again, that gives us another opportunity to buy more. Um, as I saw earlier, that uh, AMD, their seasonality, typically is bullish in um, August, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pulling it up here on the screen. Um yeah, so, oh, actually, they're very bullish in November, uh, but most February, April, May, and June is kind of consistent as far as their price, all right? So, again, I would like to see them go to 180, 190 per share. Ultimately, I want to see AMD go to 300, 400, 500, right? Uh, but I don't know if that's going to happen in the short term. There's a couple cool things. A lot of congressmen, uh, they, they're dropping their positions in NVIDIA for AMD, right? Also... AMD got a deal with Samsung. We talked about that on Strategy Sunday. So today's earnings and their guidance is going to be critical, right? It's going to be extremely critical for the semiconductor space. But again, manage your risk and play it safe, ladies and gentlemen. I cannot stress that enough. It's too much stuff going on uh, within the market between stocks, er I mean, earnings plays, and now the Fed, right? And I'm expecting the Fed to have a very hawkish tone going into tomorrow. So again, play it safe, however you want to do it. Uh, but I'm personally, I do have calls, long-term equity positions, all the way out to June 2025 on AMD, all right? Again, I can't tell you where to buy or sell, so you do your own research, all right? But yeah, it could drop to that 120, man. That's a 26% drop. You're absolutely right, Lou. Absolutely right. All right. So that being said, that's all the stocks that I'm going to cover today. But I want you to make sure that if you haven't already, get the tools and resources that you need so you can see and identify the trends. If you need the flawless trading system, DM me the word flawless. If you need the everything bundle, DM me the word discount. I'll make sure you get a link in your uh, Instagram today. All right. Let's talk a little bit about cryptocurrency. I already talked about Bitcoin. I told you guys that I bought shorts on Bitcoin on MEXC. MEXC is a platform where you could uh, buy long or short, which would be calls or puts, on cryptocurrencies. Not just Bitcoin. You got XRP. You got um, Solana. I mean, you got a whole lot of stuff, right? So I bought some shorts or puts, if you will, on Bitcoin, and I'm up probably like 18% right now. All right. Now, what I am buying right now uh, because honestly, I've not sold any Solana. I've not sold bit anymore, any Bitcoin. And I still have a nice reserve of Ethereum. I've been playing with it. I, I buy and sell on the dips. Um, but I'm holding pretty much Solana, Bitcoin, and Ethereum uh, and playing with the, the, the amount that I have. Okay. Now I'm also loading up on, loading up on, again, loading up on Proppy. Okay. 
Crappie was at uh, Robert Croak's event this weekend, had a great opportunity to talk with one of their developers. I bought my property on Coinbase.com. All right, remember, you can always go to CoinMarketCap. You could type in whatever symbol it is, for example, property. All right. And it tells you where to do it. Now, one thing I, I did also want to tell you guys about property, let's say if you decide that you want to go and mint property, right? Like say you wanted to uh, mint ownership on the White House. All right. So you, what you would do is you would click the link from your Coinbase wallet. OK, and go to the property website. Then it'll say connect wallet. You connect your wallet, select the property you want. It's going to cost you a little bit of property and you need some Ethereum for gas fees. And then you can mint your property okay so uh if you go to coin market cap it tells you all the places where you can do it again i bought mine on coinbase and i'm not saying that to shield the coin they don't pay me for anything i don't have any type of business relationship or anything like that but i really do like property and i do want to throw this one caveat in there that property back in 2000 and i think 17 they sold their first house using property. And since then, they have been a running machine off of that sale and selling more and more houses and uh, business um, uh, buildings and things like that with this blockchain technology. And I think it is going to be the future of real estate. All we need to do is break that $4 price and I see $10 on the horizon and who knows where it will be later on a year to two years from now. All right. And last thing that I'm buying on the crypto space, y'all probably won't believe me, but KAS, KAS. I actually bought this on Uphold. All right. Um, and of course, that's Caspa. This ranked number 40. Uh, market cap has slowly decreased a little bit. But I like KAS, and it's had a nice little uh, a pump, pump and dump, if you will. Past 24 hours haven't been that lovely for a lot of cryptocurrencies. But I think that this thing is really undervalued. I think we had a high of around 18 cents, sent it around 11 cents. And I do believe at some point in the very, very near future, like six, eight months, that um, Casper is going to rip and possibly end up being close to about 80 cents. That's a huge, huge gain. But I do believe that when Bitcoin moves, that we're going to see a nice momentum for Casper. And I do like its use case. OK, so once again, I'm only buying right now. Copy and Casper. I'm adding a little bit to Solana, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. Oh, and while I talk about Solana, um, I did actually have an airdrop come in on the Solana phone, right? If you don't have a Solana phone or pre-ordered your Solana phone, DM me the word S-A-G-A, Saga. I'll send you the link today. Uh, the deliveries are expected to happen in January 2025. Um but the cool thing about it is you get airdrops. I've had my pre-order since, what, November last year, October last year, and already the phone is paid for itself. I don't even have it in my possession yet, all right? So I just have to be truthful and transparent with you guys across the board because ain't no scamming over here. Also, speaking of scamming, I will never DM you first on Discord, um, so if you receive a message from me or somebody pretending to be me, uh, fact check them real quick or just give them some choice words. It doesn't matter to me. No, don't do that. Be holy. Be holy. OK, so make sure you report them and block them. OK, because I will never ask you to send me any money. So do not send anybody any money. All right. Now, let's move on to some questions and answers. Um, I saw a couple of things come through in the chat. Uh, first one was CGC, Canopy Growth Company. Canopy Growth Company, um, this is a marijuana play. Uh, the reason why marijuana is moving so much today is that uh, they may downgrade the criminal regulations against marijuana, right? So cannabis stocks have been moving on that momentum. And honestly, this is just the beginning, all right? Um, in fact, looking at CGC, Canopy Growth Company, it does, in fact, have a double top at the moment, which is typically a bearish sign. But the time frame continuity is so bullish at the moment, CGC can literally take off and possibly get as high as $18.74. Yeah, you heard that right, $18.74. And 74 cents. So uh, if this regulation or decriminalization 
does come into effect for a canopy growth company. Um, I'm hoping that not all of y'all spend your time getting high. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I do believe that this could be a very profitable investment for the long-term investor. Um, believe it or not, Canopy Growth Company was once around $595 a share. That's insane. Y'all know what I'm getting ready to do, right? <laughs> uh, Y'all know what I'm getting ready to do. Canopy Growth Company was once $595 per share. This was back in 2000, uh, 2018. And then in 2021, it was at $563 per share. That is crazy. That is crazy insane. So let me go ahead and grab a play right now. Uh, so I'm looking at January 16, 2026, $20 call. Uh, the average cost is about, it says 158 right now. I'm actually going to go a little up so my order can fill. Um, I'm going to buy 10 of them. One second. Actually, I should buy less. What do you think? How many should I buy? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine or 10? Canopy Growth Company. I, I think I'll play it safe because risk management is key, right? Let's buy three of them. I'm going to buy them at um, 190. He said 20. I'm about three. That's my favorite number. Order field. All right. So uh, you can also play it safe with shares, right? So if that is the case and this decriminalization does happen, um, then I do believe that this is going to be good. AJ, my wise investor, <laughs> friend and brother tells me to buy one. I bought three. Um, so I think that that would be awesome. And, uh, man, we're going to take advantage of every opportunity on the market. That doesn't mean that we have to fellowship in that endeavor, but we can always secure the bag. All right. So, um, yeah, Canopy Growth Company has had some momentum for that particular purpose. And I think that it could just be a it could be a trap. It could because we're still riding the 10 day EMA on the uh, monthly time frame. And then right here on the one day time frame, we have broken um, the 200 day EMA with the 10 and 20 formed a golden cross and there's a wide rising wedge. And I would love for us to get to that $18, $19 price per share. Since we're all the way out to 2026, we may be able to capitalize off of that very, very well. All right. Um, somebody said, what about Tilray? So if you go and take a look at my free watch list that's on my LinkedIn, which is in my bio, um, it has all of the marijuana stocks. Tilray is up 30.51% today trading at $2.31 at the moment. The sky is literally the limit when it comes to these plays, if in the event that that happens. You also have MJ, which is an ETF for the marijuana industry, right? Um, the only marijuana-related stock that I see that is not doing good is Scott's miracle Grow? I guess because they're so broad, uh, not just solely on marijuana, but I do believe that each and every one of these companies are going to rip. So the second top company uh other than cj cgc for performance today is w-e-e-d ticker w-e-e-d um now what that is is none other than canopy growth corporation so it's, it's just under another ticker um also let's see we've got like i said tilray's doing well so 31 percent nice what they call god candle um, so that's a pretty good proxy just be kind of careful i mean there's not an official golden cross on the one day time frame just yet um but again we're trading on the momentum of what could happen if the u.s regulators downgrade marijuana all right so i uh, hope that helps isn't that crazy man that is crazy aj all right so can you do an analysis on tlt all right tlt sure no problem all right, so looking at TLT, this is the iShares 20-year Treasury Bond ETF. Uh, TLT, actually, um, I'm surprised it's not doing better than what it is right now, um, simply because we had some pretty warm news today um, for inflationary de inflation related data. Um, but there's quite a bit of resistance in the bearish breaker structure at the moment on ticker TLT. Um, I saw the five-year 
bond up to 5% today, the 30 year at 4.7 and the 10 at 4.6, possibly depending on what happens Friday with the jobs report, whether regardless what Jerome Powell says, we could see a, see a shift in that, but there's been an extremely large amount of selling pressure on TLT today. It's actually down about 0.68%, and there's too much resistance to get bullish, but it may be a good opportunity to short at the moment because it does see a lot of downside ahead of it. I think a good entry point for puts is like around 88.24. Below 88.24, there's a strong low right at 88.06. So it's not a lot of gains right there, but maybe just a little bit if you wanted to catch a quick dip. All right. Um, side note, if you're buying short-term calls on in side note, you buying short-term calls on AMD. Nope. <laughs> uh, we already talked about AMD earlier. All right. Um, all right. Let's see. Beam. Super informal. Yeah. I like to just get right to the point. Um, also, I, I want to mention real quick before I, I migrate over here to uh, put the wrong ticker in. Beam. Um, if you have NVIDIA right now, okay. Again, the best thing that you can do is have time on your position. If you if you don't have a lot of time, go look at your theta. If it says what point. One eight nine. You're losing one hundred eighty nine dollars every day that that thing is open. All right. You can also go to www.optionsstrat.com, create a call or put whatever position you're in, and check your play. All right. Check your play. All right. Real quick, I'm gonna talk about Beam, and then I'm gonna talk about Apple Bay. Thank you, Marlise Diaz, for putting the Apple in the chat. You know, Apple is Bay, so we got to cover that today. All right, I didn't mean to rhyme, but I like it. All right, anyway, so Beam had a double top on the 10-minute time frame right there at $6.65. Um, and then it quickly started to sell off because it did hit um, a prior level of resistance here. All right, so it appears as though Beam will likely move to the upside in about a week's time is testing a break of the 50-day EMA, but still extremely bearish. There's a bearish breaker block. <laughs> I'm rapping. <laughs> uh, there's a bearish breaker block on Beam. Um, so I wouldn't get too excited, um, but that triple bottom on the one-day time frame is telling me that, that this um, electrical product manufacturer really wants to move. I just wouldn't get too hyped because earnings are in 15 days. I would be looking to play this for the momentum up to about May the 15th. Uh, but understand if the trend is not going up, you need to be going the other way. All right. Because on May the 15th, they'll be reporting earnings and expecting to report a negative 30 cent loss. Okay. So just keep that in mind, plan B. As I look at the uh, well activity on it at the moment, Beam has no whale activity, okay? So just be careful with that bad boy right there. All right, so Apple Bay has earnings on Thursday, all right? Apple has always been uh, a friend and a foe at times when it comes to the trading uh, of the market and of this ticker because it only moves so much, okay? Because it has such a large market cap. A lot of people are shareholders and a lot of people are getting dividends. Now there's a lot of, uh, of concern about Apple. Apple's had one of the largest short interests out of most tickers on the market, but what other ticker did that last week? Tesla. Tesla also had extremely large short interest. They had, interest. They had a miss on the top and a miss on the bottom, right? Their guidance wasn't even phenomenal. But then the stock took off. It was extremely oversold. And possibly we could see the same thing with Apple come Thursday. Now, honestly, it's very scary to play this thing through earnings. But I'll tell you that if you don't risk it, you can't get the biscuit, okay? I'd expect Apple to touch 176.46 as we get up to earnings. And we're probably going to do this a couple times. It'll bounce up and it'll come right down until after Thursday evening, the best time to play Apple for the ones that don't want to risk it for the biscuit beforehand will be on Friday morning. All right. If it breaks above 176.04, go ahead and get the capes out because the bulls are going to be running. 
If by some chance we fall below 171.19, the Bears are going to knock this bad boy so, down so hard, they're going to wish they never got in the fight. So I can see that Apple could possibly fall as low as $155.62 in the event that that happens. They've already told us that they're cutting production of the Apple Vision Pros. I showed you guys and talked to you guys about that last week. Also, they all uh, are trying to enhance and restore a relationship with China China, uh, as far as their iPhone production is concerned. So I haven't heard any news on that, but we saw what Elon was able to do with Tesla and reestablishing that relationship. So maybe they can get a sip of the same juice and have some type of momentum. But right now, my recommendation is to watch from the sidelines unless you can stomach the risk of losing your bag. OK, um, at this moment, like I said, it's very consolidated. All right. So DDLG. Uh, man, so many people have been asking me to look at DDLG. Jay Sook, my friend, my brother, he is bullish on DDLG, and I don't blame him. Um, but this is just one that I'm kind of chilling out on right now. I, I don't like to follow the masses all the time when they're doing things. And uh, at this moment, I actually see a negative change of character on DDLG. Uh, there's a bearish breaker block, even though it's in a, a rising wedge, meaning that it wants to go up. But there's so much resistance at 129.26. We've got to break that level. Once we break 129.26, 129.89 is the level we want to see. And then ultimately, we want to be at or above 133.27. All right, we can break out of this wedge and go rally time if we go above 135.05. Um, I think there may have been a little bit of congressional buying on it. So what we're going to do, we're going to go over to stock twits first, and then we're going to type DDOG in and see what the overall consensus is on Datadog. All right. I think also SMCI's earnings today could impact uh, the performance of this company, but it appears so consolidated. Most of it, everybody talking about it on Stock Twix is bearish, and there's very low message volume on it. Okay, so there's not a lot of bullish momentum, uh, bullish talk on it. There are a few people saying it's time to run, it's time to go, uh, but. Uh, the signs and the indicators are telling us no. Okay. So I'm going to go and take a look real quick at one more thing on DDOG because I like to always see what the big money is doing. Um, big money right now is actually buying 135 calls expiring July 19, 2024. And there are only a few put options out to looks like May of 25, July of 24. Um, yeah, a lot of May 2024 puts, 130 strike on DDOG. Um, they have earnings in seven days. That would be May the 7th. And historically, their earnings have been very good. Um, so they possibly could beat in this thing rally. So you're playing a momentum trade. I think it's smart. Um, I'm going to see what the seasonality for DDOG is for you as well. Because also understanding what are the best months that these tickers perform is something very helpful. Once again, make sure you go check out my YouTube channel, Rogers1906, The Godly Mindset Motivator. Um, you'll be able to see the analysis and everything that I'm looking at right now. All right. So um, right now they're buying uh, more calls than puts. They said the most dominant call is 128 um, expiring this Friday. Um Let's take a look at the stock. And I like these in the money plays too, by the way, because the in, in the money plays, they do have a higher delta. If you've taken that intermediate options reloaded bundle, talk about that quite a bit. Um, you the, the higher the delta, the more chance of a likely profitability you have on that ticker, okay? For some reason, it's taking a, too long on DDLG seasonality, so I'll come back to it when it comes back up. All right, let's take another question here. Uh, MongoDB, all right, MDB. Again, I would be very, very careful with um, with your uh, technology plays. I'm going to go ahead and pin that website for you guys because we have AMD this evening. I would kind of wait 
until tomorrow. Just a little, de- little delay before we start to play. All right, a little delay before we start to play. I'll just keep dropping bars all day. I don't know what's going on here. So looking at MongoDB, ticker MDB, uh, it does have a rising wedge on the 15 minute. We're at a key level of support. I'm expecting MDB to consolidate between 366.98 and roughly 370.55. I don't see a break just yet. It's a lot of resistance ahead of itself. But if you want to play this bad boy, give yourself some time because if once it breaks 390, it's going to 410. Earnings are in 31 days. I think we're still relatively early. They've got a low EPS. And I think whatever happens with um, AMD today is going to be an example of what's going to happen with MongoDB. Every quarter for the past four quarters, the expectation was so low for MongoDB that they had a 203% surprise 203 103 89 88 and i think that they may keep that same energy this quarter next month may 31st all right so i like MD, MG, mdb all the way out to maybe june july so you can give yourself a little time 400 dollars uh, price target again they keep surprising on the top and bottom and they've done it every single quarter (laughs) every single quarter that's insane um looking at the whale activity on it whales are kind of mixed i'm surprised they're buying both calls and puts um again their earnings may 17th but i noticed that past that earnings date april august 16 2024 they're buying 370 dollar puts so I like to do what the what the opposite of the whales do. I'm just saying that's probably what the market makers are doing too. But again, give yourself a day for reward on the delay. All right, give yourself a day. So um, I will wait until tomorrow. Wait till after Jay Powell speaks. Catch that trend. Write it out. I'll, or look at what it look at it when it's down. Right. Look at it when it's down. Again, I'm thinking all the way out to July, September. Those call options, because if it pulls back with the market, when earnings report on May 31st, I think they'll blow it out the park. All right. So that's just my two cents on uh, none other than MDB. And I need to make a note myself so that way I can position as well. Um, But, yes, I do like that. All right. um, uh, All right. So Legitimate33 asked about Hive blockchain. All right. So. First, let me tell you, um, I do like Hive. Um, Hive Hive ha- actually has more exposure to Ethereum um, than it does Bitcoin. I mean, not saying that they don't have Bitcoin, but they're down about 7.24% on the day that's trading at 263. Um, even though I do like Hive, I got to be real with you. Just looking at this chart set up. I might have to put them in the same category as BTBT, right? You know, I got to be fair. Um, there is a falling wedge and a triangle pattern on the one-day chart right now, and it has a lot of resistance. Uh, the low on Hive was somewhere around a dollar thirty-five cents back in December of two thousand and twenty-three, right? And then it kind of bounced up a little bit and had a Hive around six dollars and eighty cents. Um, but Ethereum needs to move for Hive to move, okay? So I think it'll be a little minute. If we get an announcement about the Ethereum uh, spy ETF, then that's going to be beautiful for Hive blockchain, okay? Um, but right now, again, watch the chart. See what happens today with Riot. You may be able to catch a nice dip um, because it could get as low as $1.35, okay? Um, all right. I want semiconductor. All right. So again, we're staying in the same vein of technology, right? I don't want to, you know, keep repeating myself, but most of these miners, it's going to move based on what happens with AMD and SMCI today. We kind of covered that earlier, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. All right. We already kind of talked about Riot. Um, We talked about price points of that, Eric Trades. So make sure you catch the replay or go check out my YouTube channel. Arm that is also semiconductor related. I did have a 105 call on arm. I practiced risk management on that Monday. So I would be very careful again. Wait till tomorrow for your tech plays. All right. So I'm just going through the chat here. Any more questions? DraftKings. Finally, something different. Hallelujah. DraftKings, DKNG. All right. So um, DraftKings has been quite interesting. We've got 
uh, a rumor, maybe, I don't know if it's news, right, uh, that Amazon has now got a contract or partnership with the NBA. Uh, that being said, that could be good for sports, meaning more people watching. But unfortunately, not a lot of people are betting and gambling anymore. So, uh, I mean, some people are, um, but there's a new way to make money that doesn't have as much risk. It's cryptocurrency. It's the stock market. All right. There's a falling wedge right now on DraftKings, right? We don't want to gamble our monies too much, but they they do have earnings on uh, May the 2nd. And I honestly think it's going to be a miss and DraftKings is going to come back to $39 a share. All right. Um, again, it could get worse than that, right? I don't think the company is going to go bankrupt because people still believe that they can make a lot of money. Um, on DraftKings, DraftKings, they say we all became traders. <laughs> anyway, uh, people still can make a lot of money betting on there, but we know a lot of this stuff is fixed, and it's not football season yet. So <laughs> maybe during football season, the stock price will go back up. I mean, and I love basketball. I just don't get to watch sports anymore. But um, I, I think that DraftKings comes back down to about $39 a share. It's in at $41 right now. Um, and I don't know if any wells are, are really messing with it. Let me see what they got going on. DKNG, man, they buying puts too. So again, I'm not alone in this, right? DraftKings is coming down. All right. So again, I'm not going to talk about any more tech plays. I get a lot of questions about those. We covered a lot of semiconductor plays today. Again, if you do not have the flawless trading system, um, DM me the word flawless. If you need the everything bundle, DM me the word discount. Um, also, if you haven't already, get locked in. There's a huge event coming up in Houston, May the 18th. Um, you can attend virtually. If you're in the CNC, be patient. The link will be posted on that day. Or you can go ahead and just buy the virtual link, show some support to Tall Guy Tycoon. Uh, but I will be speaking there. There will be a billionaire there, a couple other guests. Uh, and you do not want to miss this event. Man, the venue space is absolutely beautiful. Uh, there'll be Ferraris you can look at i think they'll probably be roped off but everything is going to be super lit so join us in houston may the 18th for our next event so i want to talk a little bit about exxon mobile and then we're going to get out of here it's almost time for power hour we've got five minutes uh exxon mobile has a bullish flag uh they did miss earnings it dropped from 121 to 118 we've seen a low as um a really strong low around 116.22, but we got two key levels of support, and that's 117.83 and 116.96. If it falls below that, then our bullish flag is no mas. All right, but if we can break above 119.87 dollars 87 Exxon Mobil will run. Um, currently, the secret sauce, uh, which I love so well. Uh, has us in a selling position. So those puts look a little bit more likely. Uh, but Exxon Mobil is just not in a place for it where an uptrend is likely to occur unless there's a geopolitical event affecting gas and oil. All right. So that is my two cents on Exxon Mobil. All right. Again, congratulations to each of you guys that got your tickets to the Dallas event, I'm mean, sorry, not Dallas, Houston. Um, if you want to get tickets to that, just DM me the word Houston. I'll shoot the link over to you. We would love for you to come and join us. CNC members, you already got access to the link first. You can go follow at tallguytycoon.com. Sorry, at tallguytycoon. And then you can click the link in his bio to go ahead and get your tickets as well. Uh, most importantly, make sure that you keep God first, ladies and gentlemen, and secure the bag. And once again, follow me on YouTube so you can go and see the chart analysis that we conducted today i'll see you guys next tuesday you got first and secure the bag and i'll see you later peace all right guys i appreciate y'all very much we got to get back to making this bread i'll see you guys on the uh on the flip side uh if you didn't get to see the shirt uh there we go <laughs> my name is mark like in the bible rogers like mr rogers neighborhood you already know what time it is all right ladies and gentlemen i'll see you later peace